Well, 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 good morning, West Ham fans. What's in Moise's contract that he's waiting for to sign at the end of the season? <laughs> Yes, everybody, Russell and West Ham Network. Hope you're all safe and well. Happy Monday. Obviously, we play Brentford later on. We're doing a live match day lunchtime. We'll be doing a predicted 11. We'll have all the fun of the fair in terms of the watch along and afterwards running around trying to interview people outside the London Stadium. What could possibly go wrong? Now, obviously, on Friday, we had the revelation that David Moyes was being off, had a new contract. He had it already for him. But he wasn't going to sign it until the end of the summer, into the season, and make sure it was right for everyone. And da, 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 da. and we speculated as to potentially the, the contract might not be on the most favourable terms for Mr. Moyes. Hence, why I wouldn't have signed it because if he was in totally in his favour, he would have signed signed it because then you then you've got security in terms of job security. Because if they do sack him, you're under contract for another two and a half years or whatever it is. But apparently. Moise's contracts, um, we've had a bit more sort of information about what it what contains, what criteria it contains. And it's sort of along the lines that we thought of, in all honesty. So that's what we're going to do today. And again, this is just spec. This is what we've, we've, we've heard. You know, I'm not saying it's true, but this is what we've heard. And we just want to impart that information over. So we do get information all the time. Um, people send it to us and, and we don't cheer. We, we, sometimes we go, yeah, OK, we'll, 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 we'll talk about that. We won't talk about that. And. I thought it'd be interesting just to get your views on it as well. And I think it's probably not along the lines of what we were assuming anyway, to be honest. So let's go through it. Now, the first point is it is a coach, a first team head coach role, not a managerial role in terms of the contract, um, which I think we would assume that would have been the case anyway with the Tim Steinden set up in terms of him being the director of football, the technical director, sporting director, whatever you call it, um, and bringing in a continental style sort of management system, coaching system, where you have a first team coach. His job would be to just manage the team, just manage the team, not as a manager, you know, but as a coach, you know, coach the team rather than not managing. It's a vernacular you'll get used to saying. So he, and as I said, I, I if everyone's, if everyone stays here, uh, like Tim stays here and stuff like that. Potentially, this will David Moyes will be the last manager we have at West Ham in terms of the current deal. Moving forward, we'll have first team coaches, and you see similar like the likes of Brentford, no uh, Brighton, for example, where dessert where it was Potter and Deserber. You still have a technical, you know, an overseeing director of football, and an ideology, um, a, a way of playing, um, a way of recruitment. And it's just that person's job to coach the side. So that's the first point. That's the first point of the contract. The second point is that um, Moyes would report directly to Tim and Mark. Tim Stiden, Mark Noble. There would be no direct contact, so to speak, day-to-day -day contact with Sullivan. So literally it is putting in that, you know, if, if there's a, what was it, an org, um, what's it called? What's it called? Organisational chart, you know, sort of say it would be the board. Then you've got sort of Tim Steinden, Mark Noble. Yeah, Tim Steinden, Mark Noble, and then David Moyes. So he would report directly to Mark and Tim and would have nothing to do in terms of David Sullivan. At the moment, it's probably on the sat lim lim sort of level playing field in terms of Tim, Mark and David uh, Moyes in terms of their interaction with Sullivan. Um, but apparently under this new contract, it's very much Steinden is the boss and they and uh, Moyes would report directly to Steinden, which you can see why he doesn't want to sign it because that's not his style. For the, you know, as I said, for a thousand games, he's been he's been the boss. This is literally, you're not the boss now. You're not the boss of me now. It would be Tim's your boss. So obviously you can see why he's not doesn't doesn't particularly like it, particularly with no contact with David Sullivan. In terms of recruitment, Tim Steinden is in sole charge of recruitment. Tim will be in charge of bringing the players in, and Moyes would have to 
integrate those players into the match day squads. As as we would assume, you know, the idea is Tim takes charge of all of all um, recruitment, sole charge of recruitment. Where at the moment, Moyes has still has that ability to veto. Um, this would be removed in, under the new contract. Um, so yeah, Tim will be in, to in to total charge of any new players coming in. And obviously then Mark will be having significant input in terms of development of players into the pathway from the academy. As we know, Mark's very much sort of um, dialed in to the academy setup. We've had interviews with the likes of Mark Phillips and, and Robbo and people like that. And, you know, Nobes is there every day at Chadwell Heath. He knows that pathway inside out. So very much Tim's about bringing players in. Mark's going to be about academy. And Moyes is going to have to like it or lump it, in all honesty. And there will be KPI targets to achieve. In a similar way to um, the more continental style management so for example someone, someone like thomas tuchel for for Bayern munich in terms of it's easy for them easier for munich to get rid of players get rid of managers if they don't hit certain criteria same as us as a job if you've got a job and you've got you know key performance indicators you need to achieve um to maintain employment that's the same here so there will be key targets to achieve we don't know what those targets are we would imagine league position we would imagine uh maybe cup um, progression as well um but those will be in charge to allow to make it simpler to get rid of um the first team coaches so we're not in a situation like now where it's sort of like and as gone as death death by a thousand cuts which is what it seems to um so the, he'll have to meet them and if he doesn't meet them he'll be let go of so that and that's basically how most continental style um coach contracts happen there's also some other bits about sort of player engagement and stuff like that, but we're not, uh, we haven't got that information to hand just yet. So, but those are the main sort of key, key things. Those are the main sort of priorities in, in the contracts. He is a coach, not a manager's contract. He will be reporting directly to Tim and Mark with no direct contact with Sully. He, Tim will be in sole charge of recruitment and there will be key indicators, key performance indicator targets to achieve, apparently. Again, this is all speculative. We don't know, you know, this is information we've been given. We thought we'd impart it and see what you guys think. Um, we know that Moyes doesn't like this contract, hence why he hasn't signed it. Um, and I think it's very much his view that if he does have a successful sort of last third of the season, uh, he will have justification to renegotiate that contract. Um, but that is the contract that is on offer to him at the moment. And that's the reason why he hasn't signed it. He's hoping the club will change potentially their mind. But um, I very much doubt that will happen, to be honest, because that would probably contradict everything in terms of the whole purpose of having Tim Steinden in charge. Um, and it's a relative belief that he will leave at the end of the season because I don't, he doesn't think, this, you know, in re reality, they're not going to change the contract entirely they might change some of it might, might dilute it slightly but that is the contract that's been available been offered to him at the moment um in terms of the press conference we're led to believe that they weren't aware of him talking going to be talking about it at the press conference so it was a bit of a, a surprise to them apparently um but they believe it's a way of him to try and negotiates more favorable terms to him um in the press um by using the press in terms of some you know in terms of negotiating um but whether that will happen or not will be another thing um apparently according to the information the board is around 50 50 over moise at the moment um but it's believed that if we were to drop out of europe then that will heavily favour in terms of Moyes out rather than Moyes in amongst the board. But that's the information we've been given. And as we said, we get information quite often and we don't choose to say it all the time. We don't talk, talk, talk about it all the time. But I thought this was in line with what we were saying already. So it sort of makes sense to talk about it and get your views as well. Um, it's encouraging 
that this is um and we i like to bring news where there's encourage and this is encouraging this is encouraging that we're you know we're moving forward um again you know for me it, it shows the influence of tim steinden and the continued going forward influence of tim steinden you know it very much is centered around tim and obviously you know with speculation of him maybe moving on i think this would be this would suggest that isn't the case and it is very much you know, moving forward with that Steinton revolution in terms of the contract, um, because it's very much in line with what we were assuming. Um, so that's why, you know, it doesn't really contradict what we were saying. It doesn't really contradict what people were assuming in terms of that contract. As I said, it would make perfect sense if the contract was more akin to what Moyes is used to, he would have signed it already because then he'd have been under contract. And if they got rid of him, he'd have had to pay out three years of compensation, for example. So it just it wouldn't make sense. So as we assumed, as we spoke about on Saturday, the whole press conference thing was very much a power play by Moyes to try and negotiate, renegotiate those terms to make it more favourable to him, which is perfectly, you know, which makes perfect sense. You know, if you were in a similar situation, you would do exactly the same thing in my eyes. Um, but anyway, keep an eye. We're back at lunchtime. Um, previewing the Brentford game, getting all ready for that. What's the worst, what's the worst that could happen? I mean, we've only lost three on the bounce. Surely it can't be four on the bounce. Anyway, take care. Stay safe. Stay warm. Stay humble. Keep the faith. Come on, you bloody irons.